Next up is the 1959 Denver Minted Jefferson Nickel. This is a very, very interesting error. If we zoom in there to the nickel, you will see that a staple was struck into the front of the coin, the obverse of the coin. Now that is why this coin here sold for over $545. Moving on to a 1971 Denver minted Jefferson nickel. Now this has a couple different errors. One, it was struck 15% off center, which you can see there in the image displayed. And it was also struck on a one cent planchet. So the coin was actually struck on a penny. Now you can see the coloration there of the coin and you can see that it is off center. And that's why this nickel sold for over $330. Next up is a 1973 Denver minted nickel that was actually struck on a Philippine five cent coin. It only weighs 2.4 grams, so definitely a cool error. If you find any of these nickels that may look weird or strange or off center or different color, definitely hold on to them, get a second opinion on them because you never want to get rid of something that could be valuable. This nickel here sold for over $450. Moving on to a 19 73 Denver minted Jefferson nickel that has a reverse split die. So we can see that split coming all the way across the coin there, almost like a little lightning bolt. And that's why this 1973 nickel sold for over $125. Next up is a 1974 Denver minted Jefferson nickel, and this has the obverse misaligned. So you can see that at the top left of the coin, most noticeably, you can see that it's been misaligned there. And it doesn't give it too much value, but definitely a cool coin to come across and add to your collection. It sold for over $30, so five cents into $30, not bad. Probably not worth getting graded though. So definitely a cool coin to come across, find and add to your collection. Next up is a 1974 Denver minted Jefferson nickel that was on a split planchet before the strike and it only weighs 2.56 grams. Now I could definitely see someone coming across this and passing it up in circulation or in their pocket change. Man, it just looks like it's worn, like someone took a, you know, one of them wire brushes to it and just worn it out. But it is actually a mint error and that's why this nickel sold for over $200. Next up is a 1977 Jefferson nickel obverse and then struck on a 10 cent planchet and it weighs 2.3 grams. You can see that error taking place obviously in the images displayed. Very noticeable error coin here and that's why this nickel sold for over $800. Moving on to one of my favorite coins of this video, 1977 nickel that was struck on a one cent coin, so on a Lincoln cent. You can actually see the memorial building of the Lincoln cent there on the Jefferson nickel and that's why this coin sold for over $320. Here's an example of a double denomination a Jefferson nickel on a one cent coin and that's why this coin sold for over $800. Next up is a very cool coin. I think a lot of people may get some of these confused with drier coins. It is a 1980 Jefferson nickel obverse struck through die cap mint error of course. You can see that the reverse of the coin is pretty fine. The obverse of the coin is where the error is taking place and that's why this nickel sold for nearly $40. So not a lot of money but definitely something to find in pocket change that's worth way more than its face value. So until tomorrow I will see you all in the comments section below. This is Couch Collectibles and this is where I disappear.